All right, this is just a basic functions review here. So we're going to go over a little bit about functions, how they work. Um, it's actually a relatively simple idea once you just understand that a function is just um, something where you input a x value and you get out a y value. And we usually just call it an f of x value instead of a y value. And so up at the top here, a, fu a, a function, a relation that pairs each x with only one y. So for every x value that I input to the function, it's going to give me only one y value. That's important. There can't be two y values that it, that it kicks out. Essentially, function notation f of x is the same thing as y. So when you see this f of x, it's really just the same thing as y. It's just a more specific way of writing an equation with a graph. So it's just a notation that we use in, in upper mathematics because it actually gives a little bit more information. But it's, based, it's just the same thing as y that you've been using the whole time that you've seen x and y. So let me give you a basic introduction here. Let's first create a t-chart of this function f of x equals 2x plus 1. To do that, I like to pick, um, you know, four or five x values to plug in. And I usually like to center those x values around zero. Sometimes functions will give us little hints as to where we want to, what x values we want to plug in, which x values might be significant. But we can always just start with zero. So I'm going to put zero right in the middle, I'm going to go back to, and I'm going to go forward to. And so now we're just going to plug each of these in for x and see what f of x would equal in that situation. So I'm going to do the work over here. We could say, what is f of negative 2? Well, that's 2 times negative 2 plus 1. And real quick, we could see that that's going to be a negative 4 plus 1. And we now know that's going to be negative 3. Okay, let's do the same thing for negative 1. We're going to plug it in. So f of negative 1 would equal 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Well, this is pretty easy. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Okay, let's do the same thing for 0 here. f of 0 equals 2 times 0 plus 1. Well, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So this whole thing just equals 1. So I'm going to put a 1 here. By this time, maybe you could see a pattern, and there is definitely a pattern here, because what we're doing is we're doubling the x value and then adding 1 to it every time. So you can see this is kind of going up by 2, so you can make a prediction that the next value is going to be 3. Let's, let's see. What is f of positive 1? Well, 2 times positive 1 plus 1. Well, that's pretty easy. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And yeah, we're right. It's going up by 2 every time. So we can actually just assume what the next value is going to be. Just add another 2 to it. It's going to be 5. If you want to check, go ahead and plug a 2 into this function. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Yeah, the whole thing is 5. So now we've kind of created a t-chart or a table of values for our function, which we are calling f of x. Well, we can graph those points. These are all just coordinates on a graph. That's all these are. See, I started at negative 2 and I went to positive 2. So let's just plot these. And um, let's make each one of these 1, right? So this is going to be negative 2. And that's negative 1. I can't really write it. But at negative 2, I am down 3. So that's right here. At negative 1, I'm down 1, so that's right here. At 0, I'm up 1, that's right here. At 1, I'm up 3, so that's right here. And at 2, I'm up 5, so that's right here. And we can see a visual representation of this pattern. It's a line. And that makes sense because this is actually a function that you've seen before, or a type of function at least that you've seen before. It is a linear function with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 1. That's why we get this line shape. And that's why we have an intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. It's going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. What that means is for every x value we see, we're going to go up 2. So we don't even need to do the function anymore. We can know the next point is going to be 7, and the next point is going to be 9, and so on and so on and so on. And so we can see this function. Okay, what's important here is... For every x value that I plugged in, notice I only got one y value. There was never like two solutions to a y value. 
for, for 1x. But sometimes we're going to get equations that are not really functions, and practice number 5 is an example of that. For practice number 5, what I want you to do is I want you to start with y values and plug them in for y, and you're going to get x values. And we'll see why this is not a function. Let's use the same numbers. Let's start at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I want you guys to try this on your own. Just plug these y values into this equation and see what you get for x, and then write those values here. Go ahead and give that a try now. Okay, hopefully you got the same values that I did. Um, now all we're going to do is we're just going to plot these points, right? This is just an xy coordinate, this is a, or a, a list of xy coordinates, and now we can plot them on this graph. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do it in red. So 2, negative 2. If I went over 2 and down 2, that would be this point. If I went, and then the next one is negative 1, negative 1. So if I go back 1 and down 1, that would be this point. And the next one is negative 2, 0, so that's back 2, but not up or down any. Then back 1 and up 1 and then over 2 and up 2. And we start to see that we get this shape here. And what this is, is this is a parabola. It's a sideways parabola, but it's still a parabola. We get this little thing. Now, why is this not a function? Why did I, why did I talk about this not being a function? Well, take a look here. There is a point here where I plugged in the same x value. I know I told you to start with the y's, that was just so we can figure it out easier. But if you look, here's the same x value, 2, positive 2. And in one situation I get negative 2, here. And in another situation I get positive 2, here. Same thing's true for negative 1 and negative 1. If I plugged in a negative 1, one time I get negative 1, and one time I get positive 1. That's these two points, here. So what we're seeing here is that we will, we're plugging in the same x value and getting two different y values. If we go back to the very beginning, we said that a function is a relation that pairs each x with only one y. Well, this x is being paired with two y's, and so that's why this is not a function. Another way that you can kind of test is something very simple. We call it the vertical line test, and that is if your function or your graph shouldn't say function because it's not a function. If your graph um, can be touched by a vertical line twice, just one vertical line twice, then it's not a function. Here you see this vertical line intersects our graph twice, therefore it's not a function. But if we go over here, there's never a point where I could draw a vertical line where it would intersect our graph twice, right? Any vertical line is just going to kind of intersect it once. So this is a function where this is not. We'll play with that more, but that's a really important concept. Uh, the vertical line test is a really easy way to test with graphs. When you have values, just remember that each x value should give you only one y value. Over here, every x gave you just one y, but here I had the x value twice and it gave me two different y values. Okay, now let's just talk about function notation. It says, remember when using function notation, f of x, the x is the input along the horizontal axis. So that's just inputting some x value. And the f of x is the output, right? It's what we get out. Or it's the y value, the height of the function, at that specific location. So we can, we can use notation to kind of just evaluate some of these things. For example, let's say... I wanted, I have these two functions, f of x and g of x. Let's say I wanted to figure out what the height was of f of x at when x is negative 3. I would write it like this. I'd say, hey, what's f of negative 3? Meaning, what is the function's height when the x value is negative 3? That's all it means. So we'd, we'd just write this out. We'd say f of negative 3 equals, and then everywhere there's an x, I just plug in whatever's replace the x with. So that's negative 3 in this situation, so it's going to be negative 3, and I put that in parentheses because I just plugged it in there, plus 2. Well, negative 3 squared is 9, and 9 plus 2 is 11. So I know that f of negative 3 is 11. So if I was graphing this, I would now have a coordinate point 
that I could graph. It's only one point. I'd probably need more to figure out what it looks like. But I'm sorry, I don't need that. It, remember, the x value was negative 3, and the height was 11. That's a point on my graph now that I know. I don't need to write this out. I'm just showing you how it relates. This is essentially the same thing as saying this. It's really it's just different ways of writing the same thing. So here's your x, here's your y, here's your x, here's your f of x. That's the idea here. So I have one more, uh, or actually two more here that I want you to work on. Um, give them a try. This one is asking for g of 2.8, so you want to plug in 2.8 for here. It's okay if you want to use a calculator, it might make it easier. And this one is asking for f of 3z. Don't let that trick you. Remember, all you're going to do is plug that, that expression in everywhere you see an x, and there's just one x there. So give these both a try. I want you to just see what you come up with, and then um, and you're going to pause the video and work on it, and then unpause it when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so if I plug a 2.8 into g of x, I get an expression like this, and then I just use a calculator to help me simplify, and eventually I get negative 6.58. So g of 2.8 is negative 6.58. Or I could say on the graph of g of x, the point um, 2.8 has a y value of negative 6.58. That's the same idea here. And for the last one here, all you had to do is plug a 3z in for x in this function f of x. Well, if you plug a 3z in, you just square it, you get 9z squared plus 2, that's it, you're done. Well, we don't know what z is, and that's okay. We still know, though, that f of 3z is 9z z squared plus 2. All there is to it. All right, see you guys on the next video.